Hey, so it's that time, or at least a few weeks past that time, as I've been reminded in several comments and emails, to do a top 10 best movies of the year list. And like every year, I haven't seen everything that came out, so if there's something that's not on the list that maybe you think should be, I might not have seen it, or maybe I just didn't like it well enough. But there are highly acclaimed movies this year that I haven't gotten around to seeing yet. Stuff like Her, or stuff like Nebraska, things like that. So I hope you're relatively satisfied with <laughs> with the list that I'm about to give. And like like any of these lists, really, this is... This is what I feel now. This is this is what I feel in the moment. Maybe a year from now, maybe a couple years from now, of course, the, the order might change a little bit on here. But these are ten movies this year that I did absolutely love. So, let's take a look at them. Number ten, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Yeah, this is the, I don't give a fuck about the critics, I love this movie entry. Walter Mitty was easily one of the more relatable characters in movies for me this year. Hell, the movie itself made me actually want to get on a plane, and that's near impossible. I really dug the character, mainly because of my common practice of staring off into space for large amounts of time, envisioning myself doing anything but standing and staring. Number nine, Pacific Rim. It's been a while since we've had a giant robots versus monster movie that does it right, and this one's incredibly entertaining, with a fun supporting cast and fantastic visual effects. Mm. Yes, the effects may have been good there, buddy, but according to the Academy, they weren't Lone Ranger good. <laughs> Number 8, Gravity. It's easy to be wowed by the movie's technical qualities, but mixed in with an insanely suspenseful story of survival and fantastic acting, it's a movie that certainly lived up to its hype for me. The suspense was so engaging that even the cheesy as hell symbolism didn't bother me that much. Ah, it's popular, so it sucks. Number 7, The Conjuring. James Wan crafted not only a love letter to 70s haunted house flicks such as Amityville Horror or Burnt Offerings, but a horror movie that lets mood and situation be terrifying and not resorting to cheap jump scares. Number 6, 12 Years a Slave. The movie that disturbed the shit out of Irving and Brian to the point to where they couldn't even make tasteless jokes. 12 Years a Slave is a man's odyssey through pure hell while still keeping his head high and his hope for freedom alive. This really is a disturbing as hell movie. Number 5, The Wolf of Wall Street. Despite what the old ladies behind me in the movie theater thought, The Wolf of Wall Street was awesome. Any movie that opens with midget tossing, has an in-depth narration on the history of lewds, and a drug sequence set to the Popeye theme is a friend of mine. Also, Leonardo DiCaprio gives one of the best and most physically comedic and original druggy performances I've seen. Number 4, Pain and Gain. A complete satire on American excess, making Michael Bay, honestly, the perfect person to direct this film. This movie did 100 times the job of being a unique look at the American dream and exceptionalism that Baz Luhrmann's The Great Gatsby did in a single frame. This was the funniest movie I saw all year. It's The Three Stooges on Ecstasy, and much better than the actual Three Stooges movie. Michael Bay... Ugh. Number 3, American Hustle. It's the movie that shows you, hey, a little bit of political corruption isn't so much of a bad thing. The movie's got a sweet 70s backdrop, a great ensemble cast, and some great character conflict with Christian Bale, a con man brought in to help take down corrupt politicians who quickly realizes that, shit, some of these guys are doing very good work. Number 2, Dallas Buyers Club. Matthew McConaughey appears to be the Oscar frontrunner for this flick, and if he wins, it's well fucking deserved. Another story of survival and pure human endurance, this time set during the mid-80s AIDS crisis, McConaughey's physical transformation here is haunting work. And dear God, if you don't have any kind of heart in you, this movie will give you one and tug at it for two solid hours.
And here are some special mentions of movies that I really dug the shit out of, but didn't quite make the top ten. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's Very Funny Don John, Iceman, which was given a limited 2013 release after appearing at a few festivals, or as I like to call the movie, 500 Reasons Why Michael Shannon is Awesome, The Entertaining as Hell Eye Candy Oblivion, Nick Cage back in dramatic form with The Frozen Ground, the comedy showcase film This Is The End, Sarah's favorite movie of the year, Rush, The Hot Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, which I expected to snore through, but surprisingly ended up loving it. The World's End, which was a really sweet movie about booze and growing up that kind of went a little overboard in the last couple minutes, but nevertheless was a great mixture of funny and serious. And Prisoners, where Hugh Jackman gave one of the more underrated performances of the year. Hmm? Hey, no love for insert movie here? And my number one favorite movie of the year, Lovelace. A sort of star 80 for its time, and is near equally a disturbing film on domestic abuse. The movie is one part light fluff, and one part here's what happened behind the scenes. The first half is all the fun stuff we like to talk about with the movie Deep Throat, but the second half being the serious shit that many people forget. Deep Throat was a movie that simultaneously set the standard for 1970s adult filmmaking, but also ruined a few people's lives in the process. Process. Linda Lovelace may be a controversial figure, but you can be a fan of the 70s and 80s adult films like I am, but still agree that what happened to Linda Lovelace was fucked up. Even though this is a story that I and many people already knew about from just common knowledge or documentaries, this was still a movie that stuck with me since I saw it last summer, and I can't possibly recommend this movie enough. It's my list of the 10 best movies of the year, or as we call, killing time before the worst movies of the year list. <laughs> I probably won't get around to doing that this week, but that'll be something we work on next week to get posted up on the site. So, until then. Mm. Honestly, I wasn't really listening. Uh, I disagree with all of that. What the fuck am I reading? <laughs>
That's my list of the 10 best movies of the year, or as we call killing time before the worst movies of the year list. <laughs> I probably won't get around to doing that this week, but that'll be something we work on next week to get posted up on the site. So, until then, mm. honestly, I wasn't really listening. Uh, I disagree with all of that. What the fuck am I reading? <laughs>3. American Hustle. It's the movie that shows you, hey, a little bit of political corruption isn't so much of a bad thing. The movie's got a sweet 70s backdrop, a great ensemble cast, and some great character conflict with Christian Bale, a con man brought in to help take down corrupt politicians who quickly realizes that, shit, some of these guys are doing very good work. Number two, Dallas Buyers Club. Matthew McConaughey appears to be the Oscar frontrunner for this flick, and if he wins, it's well fucking deserved. Another story of survival and pure human endurance, this time set during the mid-80s AIDS crisis, McConaughey's physical transformation here is haunting work. And dear God, if you don't have any kind of heart in you, this movie will give you one and tug at it for two solid hours. And here are some special mentions of movies that I really dug the shit out of, but didn't quite make the top ten. Joseph Gordon-Levitt's very funny Don John, Iceman, which was given a limited 2013 release after appearing at a few festivals, or as I like to call the movie, 500 Reasons Why Michael Shannon is Awesome, the entertaining as hell eye candy Oblivion, Nick Cage back in dramatic form with The Frozen Ground, the comedy showcase film This Is The End, Sarah's favorite movie of the year, Rush, the Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug, which I expected to snore through, but surprisingly ended up loving it. The World's End, which was a really sweet movie about booze and growing up that kind of went a little overboard in the last couple minutes, but nevertheless was a great mixture of funny and serious. And Prisoners, where Hugh Jackman gave one of the more underrated performances of the year. Hmm? Hey, no love for insert movie here? And my number one favorite movie of the year, Lovelace. A sort of star 80 for its time, and is near equally a disturbing film on domestic abuse. The movie is one part light fluff, and one part here's what happened behind the scenes. The first half is all the fun stuff we like to talk about with the movie Deep Throat, but the second half being the serious shit that many people forget. Deep Throat was a movie that simultaneously set the standard for 1970s adult filmmaking, but also ruined a few people's lives in the process. Linda Lovelace may be a controversial figure, but you can be a fan of the 70s and 80s adult films like I am, but still agree that what happened to Linda Lovelace was fucked up. Even though this is a story that I and many people already knew about from just common knowledge or documentaries, this was still a movie that stuck with me since I saw it last summer, and I can't possibly recommend this movie enough. It's my list of the 10 best movies of the year, or as we call killing time before the worst movies of the year list. <laughs> I probably won't get around to doing that this week, but that'll be something we work on next week to get posted up on the site. So, until then, mm. honestly, I wasn't really listening. Uh, I disagree.